Hello, in this video, I'm going to be multiplying um, two PyTorch tensors together. And my main goal here is just to show how similar it is to doing things in NumPy. Um, so we'll actually start by uh, multiplying two large uh, NumPy arrays together. And um, they're going to contain some random values. So you can see I'm creating two um, kind of random matrices here and multiplying them together. And um, so let me put some sizes here. And, um, and I know that for these parts, I have to say rows first and then columns uh, for both of these in terms of the size of them. And so I'll do that. <coughs> now, um, the columns of the first matrix are going to have to line up with the number of rows in, in the second uh, matrix. So maybe I'm just going to put those with some variables for now. Um, so maybe I'll put a variable up here. Maybe I'll say there's 2,000. Um, I'm trying to create some fairly large matrices just so that um, we can eventually see the benefits of going to GPUs. And, um, and then after that, right, as long as these two things line up, I could have however many, um, however many rows and columns I want, right? I could have four of these and five of these. Um, to make it kind of slower, I may have 2,000 uh, rows in the first matrix. And, um, and let's say like, uh, actually, uh, I was trying to do 3,000 uh, rows and then 4,000 columns in the second matrix. <clears throat> And then here I'm actually doing my matrix multiplication, so I can run that. Um, that'll take a moment. Um, but let's actually measure how long that's taking, because we'll want to compare as we move to PyTorch, right? So I'm going to do that. T1 equals equals time dot time. And then maybe I'll just print off the difference in seconds. And, uh, and that's taking about one and a half seconds. Okay, so that was a matrix multiplication in NumPy. What about when we want to do it in, in PyTorch? Well, I'm already importing Torch up here, and uh, it's pretty easy to create um, to create uh, tensors in Torch uh, from NumPy arrays. So um, the way I can do that, well, first off, what is the type of these things, right? If I look at the type of A, uh, that's, a, that's a NumPy array. Um, and uh, if I want to convert that to a tensor, I can say, um torch dot from numpy and pass it a and i see that's returning this tensor uh that has the same data and and so maybe i'm just trying to try to do this for both of my matrices that i want to multiply together and um if i do that and, uh, and then if i check the type of one of these i see sure enough it's a tensor instead of a uh, nd array right so i can very easily with this um torch dot from numpy uh, convert it from my NumPy array over to a tensor. Right? It's pretty much analogous. Um, now, uh, let me try to do my multiplication again as I did before. And um, how did I do it last time? I had this piece. Right, so let me paste this down here. And, and it turns out that works exactly the way it does in, in NumPy, right? The matrix multiplication does. And, and if I wanted to, right, I can time it just like I did before. And, uh, and let me grab this and let me run that and um and what i want you to notice is that it just moving from numpy to pytorch makes almost no difference um on, on the performance uh why is that well if i look at um if i look at uh say where my matrices are living or my tensors i can do that right well so, so there it is but if i say dot device I can see, okay, well, that matrix is actually on a CPU. Um, the NumPy matrices are on, on the CPU as well, right? And that's why it's kind of taking the same amount of time. So uh, if I wanted to move a matrix around, I can certainly do that. I can say A.2. And, um, and if I wanted to, I could, um, uh, well, if it weren't already on the CPU, I could do that, and that would create a new matrix for me. Um, and, and, and this creates a copy, right? So if somehow A were somewhere else, I could move it to a GPU and then uh, to the CPU, and then A2 would be the CPU version, and this would be kind of the original version. Um, if I want to actually move it to uh, to the GPU, though, um, I have to say CUDA here. And, um, and you know what I'll usually do is I'll actually just reuse that variable uh, for both of them. So I could try to do something like this. Um, I can try to move them both to CUDA. Um, what's, what's the difference between CUDA and a GPU? Uh, well, GPUs uh, are kind of for graphics in general, 
And, um, and some GPUs, not all of them, have this CUDA extension. And the CUDA extension means that uh, they're actually capable of doing kind of the scientific computing, um, all this linear algebra, that kind of stuff, right? So, so you know, you might just because you have a GPU in your computer doesn't mean that you'll be able to do these uh, PyTorch operations there. So I'm going to run this. I try to send it to the GPU, and I, I get an error, right? So uh, apparently my GPU is not set up to do uh, CUDA. Okay, and so we're eventually going to talk about how to do that. Not every machine has this capability. Your virtual machines do not, um, unfortunately. So I'll try to talk about how we can get access to that. Um, so what I'll likely do then, right, in a lot of cases, is I'll, I'll have some sort of check, right? And I can say something like torch.cuda is, is available. Like that and I can see that's false and, and if it were then this would be true so what people will often do is they'll have a little snippet of code like this and um, the advantage of this is that even if CUDA is not available the code works fine right just nothing happens it's slower if CUDA is available it'll move the matrices there and um, and everything will be a little bit faster right so I'm going to run that and of course if I check now uh, it's still on the CPU since um, since this code didn't run. I don't have CUDA available. Okay, so next time I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to get access to that. Um, one, one other thing I want to talk about uh, a little bit is when I have these matrices, for example, I have C, uh, they have uh, a lot of the similar things that NumPy has, right? I can get the shape of the matrix. It's kind of packaged up a little bit differently. It's not a tuple anymore, uh, but that's very similar. Um, just like with NumPy, I can slice these things, right? So I could have a row, slice, comma, and then a column, uh, slice. Um, so if I wanted to, I could do something like this. I could say, well, I want the top left corner, right? I could say, give me the first, give me the first ten rows and the first ten columns, right? So that's the top left. And I, I can do that just like I would in NumPy. And um, let me kind of grab this here. And uh, if I wanted, I'm just trying to do one more example like that. If I wanted to get the top right corner, then I would say, you know, negative 10 column until the end. That's the top right corner. So, so generally what people will do, right, is they'll get their data to CUDA if they can, and then they'll kind of keep it there and do a lot of computations there. Uh, because if you have a big matrix, this is going to actually be slow, kind of moving it uh, back and forth. Okay, so a lot of the things that you are familiar with NumPy uh, still apply here. Next video, I'll actually talk about how we can uh, get running on real GPUs.